September is an important month. I shared that in the previous session where we transition. We transition either from a vacation time, a seasonal time, that there's a transition that we end, we're going towards the end sprint towards the end of the year. So there's four more months. So we're not quite in the last quarter, but we are getting there. And that's why this month is always a, a good month to look ahead, that you can still plan for that peak season, especially in the creative industry, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Santa Claus if you're in the Netherlands, other feasts and festivals, festivals towards the end of the year. It's a lot of uh, uh, events, fairs happening. So you can still can make that transition. You can still put things into place. You can plan to get your art business growing. This is a community where we are looking not only at making amazing art, growing as artisans, mastering your art form, but also growing an art business. Because without that business aspect, we ain't going anywhere. <laughs> we need to earn revenue with the things that we're doing. And uh, hopefully the session is going to inspire you to show you how you can actually plan for an art event, for a next step. Maybe you don't have an art event. Maybe you're just happy. You know, so I just want to finish that painting. I just want to finish that collection. I want to finish my new jewelry design collection. Planning is so important. It's not just going to happen all by itself. So in this session, we're all going to be looking at planning, goal setting for your next event, for your next step, for your next whatever, your next, <laughs> that's different for all of us. And just to make it really practical from what steps can you take to do that. Hi, Angelique, welcome. And all the people that while I've been uh, doing the introduction, welcome to the session. Also watching the replay on the different platforms, please, you, you can continue to introduce yourself uh, to our community. So we have this live, these live sessions, usually on the Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. Central European time. You're welcome to watch the live sessions or the replays that are available for you in this uh, Facebook community, on YouTube, on my website. And the month of September, it's all about looking ahead, planning, goal setting, and also creating um, a launch plans of course you can make amazing art you can have wonderful ideas and plan ahead but if no one's going to show up that's also so such a waste of your time so launching how can you launch and market a collection something that you are planning for this this year these few months towards the end of the year so that's what we're going to look at in all these live sessions for the month of september briefly about myself as i already said i am originally from cape town south africa moved to the Netherlands to study at the Art Academy, stayed there for 33 years. The plan was three and then wanted to move to a warm country, but fell in love with the Netherlands, but also with a Dutch guy and stayed there for 33 years and relocating back to South Africa just a few weeks ago. So this is us in Cape Town, South Africa. I am an artist. I love everything art and creativity. I've been painting and drawing most of my life and now help artists in the form of co coaching courses. And like this community, I believe that art is important. You are important. What you are making is so valid for this time. We need you as artists. We need your art. We need what you have to say, your point of vision. We need your voice. We need your uh, uh, your uh, inspiration, whatever kind of art you're making. So that's not just going to happen by itself. And that's why I believe in that coaching element. And that's why I have my platforms uh, on my website. You can find podcasts, resources uh, in the community. You can find all kinds of inspiration to help you do just that. That's why it's called Help I'm Artist, because we can all do with some help. And then I have a course that comes uh, out every year in March. Is uh, Next year is the going to be the next course 2022 uh, edition and it's a 12 week intense course if you haven't joined the waitlist please join and uh, you'll be getting regular emails from me starting September how you can prepare yourself for the course it really is a deep dive into everything you need to know to not only make better art but also market your art putting it out there and uh, connecting your art with your art audience so you're welcome to join the waitlist and of course, the community, you here, you're watching live. So you are part of the community. <laughs> so you are welcome. And I'm here very often in the community. So please feel free to share. I see Tanya's here from Denmark. 
from Copenhagen. Hi, Tanya. Wonderful to have you in the group. And thank you for sharing your URL. Planning. I know planning is not very artistic. <laughs> I'm not a planner. Uh, but it's something that I've learned because it made a huge difference in my art business. I would feel it and do it. Uh, but that wasn't a very good business strategy. And planning is something that you can, you know, make enjoyable. It's something that it's part of your art routine. It's something that you can um, uh, start to embrace because then you're going to see progress in your art business. So that's why we're going to be focusing on goal setting and planning uh, also specifically for this session. And it is all about getting into the right frame of mind. Because, you know, as I mentioned in the previous session, we're not just making art. You are running an art business and nothing has ever, you know, materialized if you just sort of this ship that's on the ocean, just doing your thing, just bobbing along and just hoping you're going to reach that harbor or hoping that you're going to reach in your art goals. And that's such a, also an exhausting place to be because there's no clear direction. So getting into the right frame of mind that you are the artist, but you are also an entrepreneur. You also are building a business structure around your creativity. And that doesn't have to be stifling. It doesn't have to be boring. It's actually very um, creative setting up your art as a business. Getting into the business side of things and that's what we focus on in my courses and coaching and uh, also in, the, on the, in this platform the previous session i asked this question already and i don't know if the artists that are here uh, rejoining us for the session or maybe you've watched the replay what does artistic success look like to you this is different for all of us you know it could be an array of uh, things that's what success mean it doesn't mean earning just a lot of money that's not just the success factor that success factor can have many, many uh, uh, faces. And uh, please just quickly write in the comments, what does artistic success look like to you? Is it that freedom that you can work and make your art and earn a living? Is it that you can travel? Is that you can support your family with your creativity? It's uh, actually the process of making art. It's not so much the end product, but it's the process. It's discovering new things. Or it's working in groups. Maybe you are, you know, you love collaborating in a group. That's success to you when you, you know, every year you maybe set up a project, or maybe you're a teacher that you are teaching and sharing other uh, with other people what creativity is, your skill set, your genre. So it's so many things. And if you don't have an answer right away, it's not a problem. But it's something for you to think about because that all has to do with how you're going to be goal setting. You need to know sort of where you're going. What does that success look like to you? What does that happy place as an artist look like to you? Is it that alone time with your music and your studio? It can be whatever. So if you have a moment, please let me know um, in the comment area. Also, if the replay, you can still use the comment area. What does artistic success look like to you? And if you don't know right away, Give it some thought this uh, these weeks and uh, share it in the group. And we'd love to know. What does that look like to you? I know there's a little bit of a delay on the line, so I'll give it a little bit of time to type that in. Jan says, to get into conversation with my audience through my paintings and, of course, sell. Yeah, that's the best end of the conversation. If someone is so inspired what you're doing that they are willing to hang it on their wall and pay for it, that's a very good aspiration to have. Uh, yes, is creating for my inner well and living comfortably from it, helping and... Let me just put on my specs. Helping people through my art to reconnect with themselves and getting a fair pay for it. So, yes, it sounds like you very much you want to connect with other people. You want to help other people uh, on their journey, in their progress process. And so that art there is uh, a part, plays an important part through that in creativity. And I love what you're saying, creating for my inner well. We're going to be looking at, also, uh, at that a little bit in the session is how we need to have that well. Very often we think creativity comes from outside, but it's actually inside of us. And if we can tap into that well, into that place of abundance, 
uh, that creativity is an extension of your voice, of the things that you're feeling, the emotions that you're experiencing, then you can create from a place of authenticity and that becomes a happy place and that can translate into success because you're feeling good about what you're doing. You're not just duplicating, cloning and copying someone else. It's something that is an extension of your voice. I mean, isn't that amazing? If you can come to the place that you, you know, it's like playing the violin really beautifully, really being able to pull those uh, strings so beautifully that it touches people and uh, helps other people connect. So thank you for sharing that. Ditto says, the freedom, uh, the painting, listening to my favorite music and to decide what to paint and the people that recognize my art and me more and more. Yes, of course you love music while you're painting, Ditto. If you haven't listened to Ditto's story, there's a podcast on it. You can go to the podcast section on my website where Ditto shares her art story and how music has played such an important part in a whole process. And uh, I can just see you there, Ditto, with your music on and then deciding what musician or what influencer to uh, be painting. And uh, wonderful that uh, you have the ambition also as a businesswoman to sell more of your art, become more recognizable, have your brand stand for something and communicate that across your channels. And yes, that success, Ditto says, finding your own style having your own voice, really knowing uh, what you stand for and how you want to express that. So it looks like you have been thinking about it, but if you are still, you know, thinking, what does that success look like to me? It can also be, you know, to exhibit in a certain gallery, it to be on the front page of Forbes uh, uh, magazine. It can be whatever. There's no such thing as a wrong success goal. It is all very personal. So how do you envision your lifestyle and your business? So there's, you know, the one thing what success looks like to you. So that's sort of further down the road. But what do you envision your lifestyle to look like? Because your artist's life has so much to do with lifestyle. Because we can make all these wonderful goals. Uh, but what is the lifestyle that is connected to these goals look like? Is it very concrete? And this is something my husband and I did a few years ago. We said we don't want to just be goal driven, you know, have this these goals because it's so, you know, it's first it's so not so emotional and it's you know not so motivating to be just goal driven. But we want to be lifestyle driven. We sat down one Sunday afternoon and we started writing down what it, what is the lifestyle we wanted to lead. And that's something for you too. What is your what is the lifestyle? It's not just you know the freedom to paint. But what does that mean concretely for you? And what, how does that translate into your business model? Because that determines your planning, your next event and your next step. So this is zooming out, really envisioning your lifestyle. What does that you know, look like from a Monday to a Monday, daily, you know, through the seasons of the year? And put it down on paper, make a Pinterest board or mood board or, you know, what does it concretely mean for you? Maybe, you know, you want to have that be that full-time artist. You want to have your own studio, a space where you can not only paint, but also exhibit. That you can have other people come and join, you know, for collaborations. You want to have time to walk your dog, to be out there in nature and have other hobbies than just sitting there behind your easel. Maybe you want to travel a few months of the year or a month of the year or two weeks of the year. You want to build a tiny house. You want to live off the grid. You want to have time for your friends and family and exhibit or collaborate uh, with exhibitions or projects. Really get specific about your lifestyle. What is it that you want your life to look like? And, you know, your visual people make it visual and put it down on paper or make images, paint it out, draw it out so that this is something that you want to facilitate. And that will determine the, your next step. Do you have clear goals for your art and your art business? Because a clear plan will help you to get there. Because if you know where you're going, you can take steps to get there. And then having that balance between your inner needs and your outer goals. And I see so many arts, uh, I coach many, many artists, and I see such an imbalance between where they're going. They've been told that an artist's life looks a certain way. <laughs> this is what your goal should be. Uh, but it's totally not in sync with their inner needs. And we are all different. We all have different needs. Some of you need more quiet time. You need more peace. You need more time in nature. You need more time to sleep. You need more time to uh, be creative, uh, 
you need more time with people. These are all inner needs. And I think that's the starting point of any successful artist and also building a successful art business because it's based on who you are as a person and you're not like anyone else. And give your permission to be just your beautiful self. It's about building a relationship with your artistic self. Who are you as an artist? What are your needs? What do you, you know, what is good for you? How do you come to life? Is that music? Is that, you know, visiting? Is that cultural uh, trips? Is that, uh, you know, playing video games? It can be different to for absolutely every one of us. So building that relationship, and that takes time to really listen, to really give yourself permission to go in introspective and listen to what you need because this really will help you um, succumb uh, and it'll help you uh, prevent you from burning out and I, and I see so many burnt out artists so many burnt out creatives because they've been living outside out of their balance because that balance brings health when your inner needs match your outer goals because you can have all these amazing goals yeah I want to have three exhibitions a year and I'm paying 25 paintings per exhibition i want to this and i want to that it all sounds great on paper but if that's going to make you unhealthy and doesn't match your inner goal it ain't going to be good for you so this balance between your inner needs and your outer goals is important for health and for your productivity because it's going to make you happier it's going to make you a nicer person it's going to um, help you be more productive so have a think about that too when you're talking about planning on goal setting is having that balance. Are your goals, the things that you are striving for, dreaming of in balance with your inner needs? And then those goals won't be going anywhere. You can have all these goals on paper, but you need to make a plan. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this session is to filtering down, okay, I've got this, these big outrageous goals i have you know short-term goals long-term goals but i need to put them into some kind of plan we looked at that in the previous session so if you missed that session please go and have a look there's different kinds of goals that you can be setting for your art for your art business personal you know for your lifestyle for your health um, and what goals do you have for these next four months before the end of the year because the ability to build an enjoyable art career is more than just making your art. As a reminder, you are building a business and that is a creative fun thing to do. It's very, very um, exciting, especially when you start seeing a revenue. But, and that takes smart goals. This is a breakdown of what a smart goal is, just as a reminder that we need that aspiration. We need to have something that aspires us for the future. So it's not boring goals. Okay, I'm just going to clean my studio. Of course, that sometimes is very needed. <laughs> but we need some kind of aspiration, having those big outrageous goals to motivate us, having that lifestyle clear that we can aspire to grow towards. And then it's time to get really specific, guys, really specific. You must be able to pinpoint a goal very Clearly, you must be able to explain it to someone in two or three sentences so that they know, aha, oh, this is clear, I can see what this is. So get as specific as possible. It must be measurable. So you must be able to say, okay, it's going to cost this much, it's going to cost me this much time, it's going to, um, it's something that you can measure within a time frame. So put it down as specific as possible, something that's measurable and attainable. I mean, I can say I would love to be an astronaut to go to uh, Mars, but for me, that wouldn't be attainable. <laughs> if that would, if it's your ambition, make sure it's attainable because there's nothing worse than having your hopes deferred and uh, being disappointed and not being able to achieve your goal, always of running behind that cart, just not being able to reach your goals. And that's something you can sort of play with. You know, if you see that you've set some goals, that's why goal setting is good because you can measure them. You can say, okay, this was not realistic to uh, get my collection, these uh, 25 paintings done in a month because I work slower, my medium needs to dry, I need, you know, the framing takes far longer. Then you can look back and say, okay, I've managed to do 10 instead of 25. You can measure and you can change your plans. And they need to be relevant for your art and for your art business. Because we can have all kinds of wonderful ideas. You can do this, you can do that, you can have the collaboration here, you can have all kinds of opportunities come your way. But is that goal you're setting relevant for your art and your art business? Is it going to bring you closer to your vision? 
Is it going to bring you closer to the lifestyle that you're looking for? Is it going to give you more freedom? Is it going to help you have time for your friends and for your dog, if that is part of your vision? Uh, and then it's time-based. A SMART goal has a beginning and an end. So it's something that's very concrete and it can be put into some kind of time frame. So who's been setting some SMART goals? Is this clear what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, what it, you know, it's get specific. So if you've been writing down something that you are aspiring for, make it really specific and start breaking it down into little smaller steps. I've got my planner behind me, 2022. It's something that I encourage all of you to get is a large planner so that you can start putting things down on the calendar for the end of the year, for next year. Get really specific in your planning. And breaking that down these goals into plans. Plans are action steps. It's something that you can do today. It's something that you can start to work on today. So say you want to plan a next an art event or you want to get that website up and running. There can be all kinds of plans that you have. So you have this goal and then you want to break them down into plans. Breaking them down to increments that are actually doable will help you beat that overwhelm. And I've seen that overwhelm, you know, looking at that to-do list and saying, okay, I need to do so many things uh, can totally paralyze you and you totally lose uh, perspective and then you give up and just start doing something else. But if you're breaking something down into small little increments, it's going to help you just tick off a little doable steps. So say that is you want to set up an art event at the end of the year. So say November, you want to have it all your work finished and then exhibit that in a space, maybe you have your own space or a, a space that you're going to be renting. How do you break that down? That can sound like a huge task, especially if you're doing things by yourself, but where do you start? Make it specific. Set a SMART goal for this art event. Make it specific. When is it? Where is it going to be? Who are you going to be inviting? How many pieces are you going to be making? Are you going to take pieces from a previous collection? Is there a theme that you're going to be working on? What are the sizes? What are the prices that you're going to be using? Oh, what is the price range that you're going to be doing? Are there reproductions? Is there going to be an upsell in some kind of way? So get really specific and start breaking that down and putting it on paper. Is it measurable? Is it something that you can do within a certain time frame? Um, is it attainable? Is it you know going to be 10 or 25 pieces? Is it relevant? Is it going to help you bring you closer to your art goal? Maybe it's not an art event. Maybe you should do an online um, uh, event or collaboration. Or maybe you should just keep going and working on your style to get more specific and more confident as an artist. So what is bringing you closer to your art dream art vision and then time-based it has a beginning and an end and to get to help you in this i've made a breakdown sheet and this really helps to make really specific um, breaking down your goals you start by writing down your goal very specifically my goal is that at the end of november i'm going to show 25 pieces at this and this location <clears throat> inviting um, um, the local uh, local art uh, lovers and uh, uh, people that are in my fan base or my followers so that's very specific you can measure that what action steps do you need to take so there's a whole section that you can break down okay step one you need to get that art finished you need to have that collection done step two you need to do communication you need to start communicating on your social channels. And next week, we're going to be looking at a launch plan, how you can start launching an idea, how you can start launching something that you've planned marketing-wise on your social channels, through your emails, and on your website. So you have to write a marketing plan. Then you need to start um, advertising uh, offline, maybe local newspaper, get interviews, so that you start getting people aware of what you're doing. You need to visit the space, you need to talk with the owner of the space, maybe it's your own space, the lighting, the catering, the um, facilities, get help, 
that's something I teach in the Working Artist course is how to set up your own exhibition. You need a team around you because at an art event, you are busy and people want your attention. They want to, you know, you are in demand. It's also a place for you to shine. And if you can get your pe uh, friends to uh, uh, circle around you to help to, you know, help with the in welcoming people in, have a pleasant experience that their coat is taken, that they feel comfortable, that they know where to go for the catering, that there's maybe live music. Um, there is some kind of catering. There is some place where people can find out more about the pricing, about shipping. There is uh, marketing materials available. Because usually people don't buy at the exhibition, they buy after the art event. So you want to have, make sure that your art event goes from an online, offline experience into an online experience so that they you keep connected. You're sending follow-up emails. I have to write this all down. And I know this can be overwhelming, but write down the steps. Just go through the logical steps that you need for this event. And what is that event going to be looking like? What is it going to be? What experience is going to be? Making little thumbnails of your events. You know, if you're going to be having your own pieces, you know, what is the whole journey around the exhibition? You can do that in a cardboard box, in a space. You can do it online. There's amazing programs for free that you can actually drag and drop your art in a space so that you can see how your art story flows. So break down the event into steps. And then you need to know what resources do you need? What is it that you need to actually achieve this uh, financially? Make a cost um, calculation. Uh, you know, everything from the rent to the publications to the PR materials to uh, the artwork. What is the financially, what does that look like? And if it's not your strong point, ask someone to help you that's, you know, more um, the other side of the brain and more of the figures. Because this is where uh, it's lovely to organize an art event or organizing something that has fin financial implications. But if it's going to totally paralyze you late because you've gone into debt or can't really afford it, then that's going to be problematic. So you need to have a realistic view also of the financial side. What time do you need um, to organize it? What skills do you need? Maybe you need to have help with your marketing. You need help with setting up the exhibition uh, with the lighting. What assistance do you need? Uh, do, what kind of motivation? What's going to motivate you to do it? Uh, the materials, the tools, and the systems that you need. Maybe there's, you know, need some kind of payment system or you need to set up a, a tiki. You know, that's something you do in the Netherlands that you send little uh, pay, pay requests for people that are buying a card or buying uh, a painting or a piece of jewelry or whatever you're doing uh, at the art event. Then at the goal category, it can be something, a goal for your art business. It can be a personal goal. It can be a business um, a lifestyle goal, so that's what I mean about the category. If we're going to the right side of this form, the motivation, you need to achieve it. You need to get into that right headspace. How, what is going to help you? Maybe you need to finish other projects first before you start with this project. And a SMART goal is measurable, also in a time frame. When are you going to be starting? What's a halfway mark? What's realistic so you can check whether you're on schedule? Uh, what are possible distractions? Maybe something's coming up. Um, that's going to possibly distract you. Uh, how can you already um, help yourself that it's not going to be a problem and get you off course? And then a projected uh, end date. And what are the consequences if you're not achieving this goal? And that's especially when it's a lifestyle goal or something for your business, not setting up your website or not having that art event, it means that you're not going to be selling your art. That's a consequence. And consequences when you get clear about what, what's going to cost you if it doesn't happen, that it can be a motivator. So think through what are the consequences if you are not going to be reaching this goal. So this is just a breakdown sheet. Does this help? Uh, it's something that you just helps you, hopefully, uh, get more concrete with your goal. And uh, you can take this setup and, you know, translate it into other kind of forms. There's all kinds of forms available also online how you can break down your goals into doable steps that you can do today to bring you closer towards that goal. So hopefully this is helping. This is breaking down an idea, whether it's an exhibition, a project, you know, whether it's the getting your social media done, whether it's having profile photos taken for uh, your bios, 
uh, writing a piece of text, sending out your newsletter, you can break it down into steps because you can have it in your head. Okay, this is something I want to do, but putting it down, okay, now I need to get my emails sorted or, you know, set up that MailChimp account so that I can send that email. I'll be said, uh, Jess says, yes, it helps a lot. I'll um, put it up as a PDF in the Facebook community so you can download this breakdown sheet. Or make a screenshot, just like <laughs> Jess just said, um, did I just said. So breaking down your goals into plans, and you can do that for your year, you can do it for quarters, for your months, for your weeks, and for your days. Breaking it down, guys into small little steps, using a larger planner, using your um, uh, diary every day, write down, I shared in the previous session, my Sunday evenings is my planning time, but I plan my week and I say, okay, this is what's going to be happening. This is set in stone. I can't move these dates. This is something that's already been organized. How can I use the time between that to do what I need to do or what I love to do? And also plan your rest time. And it's like a big cross. It's like, this is my fun time. This is when I'm going to be finding inspiration, going into nature, um, you know, going on an, on an adventure, going on an artist date with yourself to find inspiration. Plan those things too. Very important. We're working in the creative cycle. When you're running a business, you have to get an idea of your creative cycle, that you're working in quarters. And now we've turned the corner to September and we're heading towards the end of the year. So you have four more months, three and a half and ticking. Well, it doesn't go that fast, but you have a few more months towards the end of the year. What goals can you turn into plans for that year? And I see Jan also commented that he's busy with a calendar. I know some of you are busy with an exhibition. They're all different things that um, you can do to get your art out there. Making those reproductions, you know, small little gifts. Um, diversifying your business so that how can you make the most of your energy, the time and the, um, the inspiration that you're putting into your art, all that effort, diversifying. And that's the biggest and most precious piece of advice a businessman gave me a few years ago and it made a huge difference in my art business. He said, Sonia, I want you to think big, start small, but scale fast. Now, the big think big was not a problem. I'm always someone that thinks, uh, you know, big, impossible things must be possible. You know, there was like no, no such thing as it's not possible. Then you make a way. And I think many creatives are like that. People say it's impossible. You say, well, you know, we're creative. We're going to find a way around it. We're going to make it work. The challenge came to making it small, starting in small steps, well, especially when you're visionary, you think big thoughts, you think, you know, you have this all this emotion about uh, what your life uh, needs to look like. You give up your full time job because you want to be a full time painter because that just feels so right. But you need to start small so that you can, in the cadence and in all, you know, sensibility, build up your art vision, building up your art uh, dreams so that your inner goal, inner needs and your outer goals are matching so that it stays healthy and productive. So breaking it down into small steps. The big challenge was also the scale fast and especially I worked in fashion many years in the hot couture so that's high end fashion where you ended up months and months and months on one item and that's maybe with your art form too. Maybe you take weeks on a painting or months on a painting. So the scalability of your uh, business model is very dif difficult and difficult to support your lifestyle. So just that one-off piece, that can be challenging. And I know that may be your happy place, but the challenge is for you as a business person is to find the scalability of your talents. How can you diversify that what you're doing, getting the most out of your uh, efforts, scalability. I want you to think about that. Go and look at other artists that are successful, that have business models. How are they scaling their business? Whether that's through reproductions, that's through teaching, that's through uh, other collaborations, staying true to their core, true art form, you know, having that full-time working artist, but also scalable. And uh, uh, Rachel Tenerlach, she's a perfect example of that. 
there is a podcast of her on my uh, website. Uh, have a look and listen to her story that she's found ways. She's built two brands. She's got the brand that's on Etsy, that's reproductions, daily paintings, quick turnover, and that supports her big passion, which is fine art, working in environmental uh, uh, paintings, supporting the environment that's very important to her, but that is not the big um, moneymaker. She needed another revenue stream within her art form. So she could have gone and done other work, you know, worked in uh, uh, another space, but she decided that her creativity was important. That is what she's going to be using also to diversify her business. So how can you diversify what you're doing? This is something we're going to be looking at in previous sessions, uh, in future sessions, because this is all about building your business. And let's just zoom in a little bit about that income. It's like, how much revenue do you need to generate? And that's something we don't talk about a lot because we're, so, we're not motivated by money as artists. We're motivated about uh, uh, through our creative process. It's what we love to do. It's our passion. But we need to consider that money side of things, the income. What income do you need to create every month to support your lifestyle and your business? And that's something that you can make a goal by the end of the year to have a clear idea of what you need. How much money do you need to support that lifestyle? And maybe that can be aspirational for in a few years. That's one plan that you say, okay, I want to have the freedom to travel. I want to find my inspiration in beautiful cultures all around the world. That has a price tag. How can you walk out your art dream so that you can get there? I know some of you want to leave uh, other jobs and want to be full-time working artists. How much income do you need for the lifestyle? You know, some of you have larger lifestyles. Some of you have leaner lifestyles. It will be different for all of us. Put a number to it. Write it down and break it down because we all have all kinds of expenses. You have your fixed expenses, your variables. You have the salary you're going to be paying yourself, your amenities, your services, your subscriptions, your insurances. Your materials, equipment, office, if you have an office, uh, you have investments that you make in your savings, education, tax, even looking ahead, you know, if you want to build a pension for yourself, especially if you're a full-time working artist, you will, there will be a time that you can't be so productive. How can you save for that? So getting all your expenses down on paper and saying, okay, then you end up with a number to be able to pay for that. And maybe you need your help of your accountant or a good friend or someone that is good with numbers. You can sit down and just break it down on paper. What does that number look like? Because that number will determine your business strategy. As I said, this is something we're going to be looking at in the future. Because you can have, say you need 10,000 euros a month or whatever, rand. It's a number depending on your lifestyle. Like this is the number that you need per month to uh, live a happy uh, uh, artist life to reach your artistic success you can go for i want those 10 customers that are going to be buying paintings for a thousand euros a month so it's doable and attainable within my business model realistic expectation that i will be able to sell 10 paintings maybe you have to make 25 but you'll sell 10 for a thousand euros and that'll bring you to your ten thousand. maybe you need a hundred customers and they are buying something for 100 euros so that you need to do more marketing to get 100 customers have a larger social following reach out to more people can you find 100 buying clients for 100 euros or 100 rand or 100 wherever you are dollars pounds that'll bring you to your 10,000 or do you need to have a thousand customers can you get thousand customers excited to spend 10 euros a month and then reach your 10,000 euros, rands, dollars. So this is, this is the business side of things. Thinking like a business person and deciding whether you want to have a smaller collection that is high end. You do a marketing so that you can really elevate your work, your website, your social channels, your messaging. So that you can reach those 10 people for 100, for 1,000. Or you can reach 100 for 100 or 1,000 for 10. And it all comes down to that number that you need per month to sustain the lifestyle you need. 
And this is something that you can grow towards. This is something that you can aspire to because it just helps you putting it down in a number. And it's not so much the feeling or emotion or the dream or the, you know, the goal. It's a number. So sit down these next few weeks and get clear about your number. What number do you need? And how can you reach that number? What business strategy are you going to be using to reach that number? Because we have to adopt that business mindset. Does this make sense about how you're going to be reaching your revenue goal? Because that is a goal in itself and it helps you support um, the lifestyle. Yes, it is a course. This is part of the course. Jan is right. Jan is a student alumni of the Working Arts course. This is something we zoom in and take very seriously is how you're going to be building your business. That's the whole core, core of the course. Um, and this is part of our uh, business course. The business, the module two business uh, lesson number five is all about planning uh, your art business and also from a numbers perspective. And uh, I will be adding the PDF of the breakdown sheet uh, for you to download. There are many more sheets in the course, but this is one I want to give to you as a gift because it's really going to help you move forward. So don't let that confusion or overwhelm keep you. Break, stop breaking down very concretely what you're going to be doing into those steps. So does it make sense? Please give me a yes or a no or a maybe or a <laughs> going to be watching the replay again and again and again uh, that you can start breaking your goals down into steps, into action steps that you can tick off on a list and say done, done, done. And that really is so refreshing when you start seeing movement. And that's what I love about uh, the Working Artist course. And we have a mentoring program after the course when you see that people start getting it, aha, it really helps. Maybe they've had an aversion against planning, but they've taken steps and they're seeing it on their bank balance. They're seeing effect. They're seeing they are being sold because they've made a plan. They've put it into some kind of structure. So that hopefully, hi, Hussein, <laughs> good to see you here, uh, is going to help you. Uh, so have a listen, re-listen to our last week's uh, session and also a decision. And then next week, we're going to be zooming in more about the launching. Uh, these are some apps. I'm using Trello at the moment, uh, which also is the digital form of that breakdown sheet, because you can, so have a look, Trello is for free, uh, but there are different uh, planners out there that you can adopt, put it on your phone, put it on your um, uh, tablet or your computer, or just use a piece of paper or stick it on a board, as long as you're getting it out of your head, you know, all these plans can be here. You need to get out, 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 start doing them, and then you're going to see results. So next week, we're going to create a stellar launch plan. What does a launch plan look like for your art and for your art business, for a collection, for a body of work, for something that you're making? How can you get it out there? Launching it, it's that rocket booster that's going to uh, make what you're doing more visible. Uh, for your uh, art audience and how do you launch a product or how do you launch a collection a body of work and that's we'll be looking at that next week any questions guys uh, i just want to open the floor for these last few minutes are there any questions maybe i've missed i'm just going to go down and see if there's any questions then I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you are in the replay, you can add questions um, in the Facebook community because this is what the community is for. Then I'll check and we can help each other take those action steps. Thank you for sharing that, Jan. He says, yeah, he's not only an alumni of the Working Artists course, but also part of the mentoring program, which I mentioned that comes after the course. We really deep dive and uh, implement everything that we're doing in the course. Jess says, thank you. What a pleasure, Jess. It's always so wonderful to have you here. And I'm excited about uh, all the steps that all of you are going to be taking in this next season. And please keep me posted. 
uh, also in the uh, Facebook community. So, no questions. Great, glad that you could join me for this uh, live session. Next week, we'll be back with another live session. Have a wonderful week and uh, let's stay connected in the community. Wish you all the best and uh, until next time. Bye from Cape Town.